It's time now for the award-winning number one local talk show in Northeast Pennsylvania, The Sam LaSant Show. Now here's your host, Sam LaSant. Well, folks, our journey continues about learning about health care in the greater Hazleton area, and for that matter, the surrounding areas of Hazleton. Um, the Lehigh Valley Health Network, isn't it fabulous, folks? They, they just keep on raising the, raising the, uh, raising the, uh, the level of care we have today. Uh, we're going to take you on a little journey. Uh, and I, this is going to be interesting because I, I happen to go to the um, emergency ward uh, about a year ago and uh, it's, it's quite interesting what they do. The importance of having a trauma center in our community. Um, hope you never have to use it, but if you do, you're going to learn a lot today and why it's so great. Uh, the show, under the show today, we have Dr. Greg Jones, who is the emergency room director. We have Dr. Gary Bonfante, who is the trauma program medical director. We have Alexandra Malenka, who is the trauma program coordinator. And we have Wally Boyle, who is a paramedic of APS. And we have Danny Ryman, uh, who is the critical care transport uh, paramedic. So, um, but now, uh, let me welcome on the show uh, Dr. Jones, Dr. Bonfante, and Wally Boyle. Thanks for coming on the show, gentlemen. Thanks for having um, us. Sir. Dr. Jones, okay, first of all, congratulations to you and, and your team at Lehigh Valley Hospital. Thank you, sir. It amazes me. It, it amazes me. I, all, the, all these shows I'm doing, um, how the, the expertise that we have in Lehigh Valley and, and how the team works, it's, it just, it's just great for our area. Um, now, this, uh, the Hazleton, is successful in becoming a level four trauma center. Okay, so tell me what this means, how do you reach it, and explain how this trauma center is not separate from the ER. Well, this uh, achievement accreditation was a process that took several years. It was not just an, an overnight thing. A lot of hard work from a lot of people, many of whom we'll talk to you today. Um, a level four trauma center is essentially a trauma center that is run within the emergency department. It's not separate from the ED, but rather integrated within the emergency department. Um, all of the ED physicians have uh, advanced training and participate in ongoing quality improvement projects. That's, you know, it, it always fascinates me how, how, the, how everything falls into place. You don't know what emergency is coming in. But there you are, you know, you, you know exactly what to do. Now, many people in the area are curious about what it means to have a trauma center in the community. So we have a, 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 an expert here, Dr. Bonfanti. So um, I'd, like to, I'd like to have you, uh, doctor, um, sort of like run, you know, ask the various questions or explain to the audience just exactly, you know, how this whole team works. Oh, thanks, Sam. So to expand a little bit about what Greg was saying is it's been a process for several years. And so a level four trauma center is basically a center that has many processes in place that allow us to rapidly stabilize, treat and care for these patients and get them to the most appropriate destination that they need to be for continued care. Um, a lot of people involved in that. Um, a lot of like Greg said, board certified emergency medicine physicians, uh, nursing staff, uh, we utilize radiology, CT technicians, blood bank, laboratory. Um, a lot of people are brought to, to the patient's bedside when a level four uh, trauma alert occurs. Um, so, and there's a lot of behind the scenes things that also happen that we'll talk a little bit more about as we, as we go along, hopefully, and we have time allows. I guess maybe the best way to go through this is like you, you alluded to, is kind of take you on a little bit of a journey of what happens from the moment somebody experiences a trauma in the greater Hazleton area and how we put that patient through the system. Wally, as you mentioned, uh, runs with uh, APTS, local, one of the major local ambulance squads in the, in the area. And so, for example, if a patient has a traumatic injury and it could be a car accident, a gunshot wound, stabbing, fall, any type of trauma that you might think of, even a burn, explosion, uh, those people or somebody they love will, are, will usually activate EMS, uh, or they may bring them directly to our hospital. But when they do activate EMS, I'd like Wally to, to speak a little bit about the type of care that that patient re would receive and actually how they coordinate with us in the emergency room before the patient even arrives. So, Wally, well, you want to talk a little bit about well, that? Well, pretty much, um, you know, when they activate EMS, it's through 911, so we get dispatched through the 911 center and based on our dispatch information and what the county shares with us, um, we may already put uh, medevac on standby if we know what kind of trauma we're you know, going to, whether it's a car accident, 
shooting a fall victim down multiple stairs. Um, once we get there and we get to the patient side, you know, we'll do a patient assessment. We'll see what their injuries are. Um, if we feel that they need trauma services, you know, we'll contact um, Hazelton through uh, cellular phone uh, to keep the patient information uh, out of the general public and advise them, you know, this is what we're looking at, which will activate the uh, trauma team to start assembling in the ER. Um, at that point in time, you know, we'll do our IVs, stabilize the patient, do any type of splinting, uh, cardiac monitoring, uh, any drugs that we may have to give while we're en route. Um, once we have a better idea, we'll contact the ER again, give them an update on what is going on with the patient, what we've done, what we see, um, and pretty much you know, get them there as quick as we can and as safely as we can. Um, once we get into the ER, they have a specific bay or a bay assigned when we get there, um, and the trauma team will get around, and they will pretty much quiet down and allow the paramedics to give an assessment on what we found in the, in the field, the mechanism of the injury, um, if there was any loss of consciousness, um, anything that we've done in the field so that they already know what care we have provided to that patient in the pre-hospital setting so that they can take what we've done and built upon it and continue the team effort between what we have done already in the field and what their next step in the ER is gonna be for that treatment of that patient. Wally, how comfortable should I feel uh, when you or your team comes to to my home or wherever I'm at, knowing, you know, uh, because certainly when they hit the good doctors, they're trained, okay? So how trained and how comfortable should I feel, you know, when, when the, you're coming to get me? All of our people are trained. Um, right now, Dr. Jones is our medical director. Um, so all of our people receive training through Lehigh Valley. Um, we attend classes, we have continuing education classes that we must keep up with with the state to keep our certifications. And we have built a, a uh, very good rapport with Lehigh Valley so that the education aspect that we get through Lehigh Valley coordinates with what, what they do. So it, it keeps that team effort. So training and schooling uh, continues that team effort. Dr. Bonfondi, when, when, when they're picking up the, the person, okay, um, what, what are they in contact with Dr. Jones or, or you, or how, how does this work? So they will communicate with us through a, basically what we call medical command radio. Mm -hmm. um, and what that allows is for the physician who is on duty, again, board certified emergency medicine physician who's on duty to communicate with the paramedic and help coordinate their care. So within the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania, there are some interventions that paramedics can perform pre-hospital and they may discuss that with us as well. Mm -hmm. So we can provide on online direction to them if there's a life-saving intervention that needs to be done. And that happens in a very collegial fashion. They can communicate with us. They're basically our eyes, our ears. Mm -hmm. They're sometimes, they can tell us what they're feeling. Mm -hmm. And they can communicate with us and give us an insight. Then we can help them, help stabilize the patient until they get them to us. Dr. Jones, you're the emergency room director, correct? That's correct. And, and you're the trauma program. What's, what's the difference here? Um, I'm responsible for overseeing all activities within the emergency department um, medically. And then the trauma um, director oversees the trauma program. The trauma program in our hospital is predominantly within the emergency department, but Gary ha also has oversight into those departments um, outside of the emergency department that utilize trauma. We talked about radiology a bit. We talked about the lab and blood bank. And Gary just works to coordinate all those departments together in the interest of the trauma patients. So um, you come into the picture if it's a, when you say trauma, what, what would be the difference between if I'm coming up with a swollen tongue like I did, okay, that's an emergency room, right? Okay. Correct. Okay, so what separates trauma? It, what would give me a heart attack or? Well, I, I think what we're looking at there is that there is, um, Yes, correct. It's a basically a kind of a, a little bit of subdivision, if you will, or a subset of the patients we care for. Subset is probably the more appropriate word. So if you came in with a heart attack, you'd be a myocardial infarction patient, we would deal with you in that aspect. And if you came in with an allergic reaction like you did that time, Sam, that would be a medical condition. I'm there on staff like all our physicians are to deal with all those types of emergencies that come in. So the trauma program per se is a program developed, as Greg alluded to, 
within the emergency department that, and that we oversee, okay? So it's an aspect, kind of like uh, our MI Alert program. The MI Alert right. program or is- our stroke program. Our stroke program, correct. So those are programs within the department that we oversee, but we still continue to care for all those patients. So it's not like I would be called in specifically for that. The, the thing that excites me about this is, is how this whole thing works together, okay? I think the public would, you know, when, when emergency happens, God forbid something happens, you know, you dial 911. I guess time is always of the essence, correct, uh, Wally? And so at that particular point, in time, when, when we hit 911, and we say, you know, we have an emergency here, the guy is whatever, um, and then the, the, they in turn call who? The, you or how, did, how does that work? Well, then the county would, would set our tones off to dispatch one of our units to respond to the emergency. So time, then when you get there, all right, then you assess what's, what the situation is, correct? Correct. And then at that particular point in time, when are you then in contact with either uh, Dr. Jones or Dr. Bonfante or, or the emergency room. Yeah, we would call the medical command line uh -huh. and you know advise them what's going on, what we see. You know, like Gary said, we paint them a picture. Okay. Um, they need to be able to see, you know, whether you know there's major intrusion into a car, whether they fell down carpeted steps or concrete steps. So we're pretty much their eyes, and we have to paint the picture of what caused the injury, and that way they can see. Okay, we see that there's a broken arm but what else could have affected the patient through the mechanism of injury? Something happens uh, at home, uh, whether a person's feeling faint or they're getting pains or, or whatever, um, it's, it's, it's critical at that time to call 911, correct? I mean, you don't, yes. is that what you would correct. advise? Correct, correct. Uh, I would think that would be very important to get, to get there as soon as possible. The, the other interesting thing is, is sometimes people who go to the emergency room and there's always, you know, some people think that when they get there, they should go right into the emergency room. Okay, maybe you shouldn't because that's where you, you how, do, you know, how does that work so people know that, you know, you are doing your job and you're doing what has to be done? Right, we, have a, we have a triage process. So if patients are arriving not by ambulance, they'll go through the triage process to see what level of care they may require. Obviously, those with the most life-threatening injuries, we want to get back and see immediately. And then some people, you know, because all the beds may be filled up, it may take a while before we can actually get them back to be seen by a provider in the emergency department. But it's a, a very um, uh, strict triage criteria that we follow within the emergency department because what we want to do is take care of the most acute patients and the sickest patients and first. That's, that's I think the key thing is that you have to you know you, you have to judge who is the, the most important person to get in there okay. Um, the success rate has been knock on wood fabulous uh, up at uh, Hazleton uh, the Lehigh Valley emergency room it's just been you know fabulous you know I I admire, I really do admire everyone who's involved in the trauma emergency room because you, you, you tune into different, it's like tuning a channel. You're watching cartoons and you're watching the sandless, then you're watching, I mean, you don't know what's happening, right, Gary? I mean, well, we, we do. I mean, part, part of our training, and that's the, the beauty of being board certified and going through a residency training, is that over the years, you certainly learn how to multitask like that and keep many things inside your head. and and learn how to take care of all those different things going on and try to provide everybody the, you know, the appropriate amount of attention that you, that, that you can. And um, it, it works, you know, it, it, it's, certainly does. it seems like chaos uh, to yeah. a lot of times to other people, but yeah. to us, that's our kind of our life. Uh, and we, it certainly does. And, and believe me, it's in, it, I, I applaud you because I think you really have to, you know, you have, it's like, it's like who comes a stroke victim, who's a heart attack victim, who's someone's, cho I mean, it's just like crazy, you know, I'd be, probably go nuts in that, <laughs> really. Uh, I admire, I admire you Thank for you. what you do, seriously. But you're going to stay with me, Gary. Correct. Okay. You too. Um, I appreciate it very much. Well, we have two other people coming on. Alexandra. Uh, Malenka, who is a trauma program coordinator, she'll let you know what's going on there. And then Danny Ryman, you know who he is. Uh, he's been around a long time. Uh, not that he's old, but he's been around a long time. Critical care transfer paramedic. How these things work, it's, it's fascinating, folks. It really is. But you know, the good thing is that we have a first class health system uh, with Lehigh Valley Health Network. I mean, uh, you've seen the shows. And if you want to see all these shows that we do, the health shows, you go to our website, ssptv.com. Uh, or uh, my email is sam at ssptv.com. We're going to take a break. We'll be back with uh, Alexandra and Danny right after this message. 
Welcome back to the Sam LaSanne Show, folks. Remember, you can watch all of our health shows on ssptv.com. My email is sam at ssptv.com 24-7. Uh, and yes, folks, we're now at a high definition. So for those of you in the greater Hazleton area, uh, SD Channel 13, HD 513. Uh, thank you, Service Electric Cable Vision. My guest today, folks, we're talking about the trauma center in our community. First class, first class. We had Dr. Jones and we had Dr. Um, uh, we had Wally Boyle on from the apps on the first second. Uh, we're going to be joined again by Gary Bonfanti, who is a tra trauma program medical director. And joining us on the set is Alexandra Malenka, who is the trauma program coordinator, and Danny Ram Ryman, who is the critical care transport paramedic. So, doctor, continuing on with the trauma patients, okay, there's many questions that people have when they get to the hospital. So, you know, where do we go, what we do. So walk us through that. Yeah, thanks, Dan. Let me walk you through that a little bit more. So as Wally was talking about, the patient comes into the emergency department, they're usually brought into a special room uh, that we've designated for our trauma room, and then our resources for a trauma alert patient are brought to bear. And like we talked about earlier in the first segment, we discussed whether it be radiology, blood bank, respiratory therapists, nursing staff, the emergency room physicians obviously are all brought to that patient's bedside, and the care is rendered to those patients um, as we move through that care, that timeline of care. Um, and obviously interventions are done. Uh, Life-saving interventions are done. The patient may be put on a ventilator. They uh, may have a uh, chest tube put in if that's required. Uh, ultrasonography is brought to the bedside. We sometimes do that. And, and that makes me think of a specific example and something that you were discussing. And I'm glad we have Dan and Alex to help discuss that as well. Because a lot of times people question uh, why we transfer patients out. I, I hear that quite frequently in the community uh, and in the emergency department that there's sometimes a concern that the hospital tends to transfer patients, that we just send them down to Lehigh all the time. That's, that's not entirely true. What we're looking to do is provide them the most appropriate level of care that we, we, can, we can do. Uh, a perfect example is somebody may come in uh, from a motor vehicle crash, say, for example. And in the course of their care, we've identified that their blood pressure might be low, that their heart rate might be high, that they may be thinking poorly because of that low perfusion to their brain. That as we're going through our process, I, I may grab, or one of my colleagues may grab our bedside ultrasound, and we might look with the ultrasound at their abdomen and discover that there's fluid in there, which in the setting of trauma is presumed to be blood. And then we might see something wrong with their, let's say just pick an organ and say their spleen. So now we've determined that they possibly have a ruptured spleen and they maybe have a head injury as well. Well, we can stabilize that person in the emergency room. We do an excellent job of that. But there are services that sometimes be provided at a higher level trauma center that we can't provide at a level four trauma center. And what we're looking to do is really just provide that patient the most appropriate level of care. So we might stabilize them, but at the end of the day, if I, well, only could wish if I was a 25-year-old man again, um, and I have a splenic rupture, I may want to have that spleen saved as opposed to be taken out. Well, that might be a service that we can provide at a level one trauma center that we can't provide at a level four trauma center. So if you were given the option of living your life, the rest of your life without a spleen, for example, or or having it possibly salvaged with specialized services at a level one trauma center, then we would want to do that. That's only to make sense. So it's not that we want to just transfer everybody out. Certainly we want to be able to care for those patients that we can care for at Lehigh Valley Hazleton, but we also want to provide them the best opportunities that we possibly can at the, at the level one trauma center. So I hope that explains it a little bit to the audience and that they have an understanding. And I think Alex can probably speak to a little bit of what the nursing staff does in that trauma bay. And, and Dan can also talk a little bit about those transfers. Alex? Um, I want to say that the nursing staff, when you are standing on the outside looking at a trauma alert, you know, from the time that EMS rolls in, they're giving you a report, you have to understand that every nurse is trained um, very intensely about where to stand, what their job is, who's going to document. Every person has a role um, in that room. And I think that it might look like chaos from the outside, but what's really happening is very organized response um, 
on the inside, and that is there is communication there that it's not necessarily loud and boisterous. It's just that everyone knows what their role is, and that came with you know extensive education and training, and continuing education and training, um, which is part of my job to help make sure that that is all a well-oiled machine. I think that's most important. And the nurses do a great job. And I mean, quite honestly, there's no question about it. Oh, absolutely. Uh, every ancillary staff member that responds. Yeah, there's no question. About it. And so, so then what would happen is so if maybe now we've made that determination, and I should I should also say because of us being a level four trauma center. We have standards that are by Pennsylvania Trauma Systems Foundation by where we can keep patients in the hospital. And we've gone through many processes with our hospitalist service that now, and our orthopedic specialist as well, that we will keep certain patients because of this designation at our facility. So that provides a level of service to the community that we did not have before. But we also are able to now recognize because of those standards more often those patients that should go out to a higher level. So that's really, what, and it, the communication is so much better because of this designation now. And so then what happens if we do communicate now with the level one trauma center, uh, and we do make a determination together that the patient is going to go down to Lehigh Valley Cedar Crest, then a lot of times what we try to do, because we have the special service of having the helicopter right here, which is great for all our programs, Noro, MI Alert, and Trauma, then we would contact, like for example, a member of Dan's crew uh, and they would either transport by ground or, or helicopter. Dan, I don't know, would you like to speak a little bit about that for us? Yeah, uh, as Dr. Bonafonte had uh, suggested, there is a type of triage. So if the patient can remain locally, we certainly want that to happen. We want uh, families to uh, be able to visit and, and uh, see their patient, see their family in, in the local community hospital. For those patients that do uh, deserve a level one trauma center or the highest level of trauma care in the state of Pennsylvania, uh, that would be where we would come into play. Most likely flying them in our medevac helicopter located uh, 75 feet from the helipad, uh, from the ER doors, and they would be, um, that hour trip would be now 14 minutes by air. So it's, it's basically a quick, fast, uh, very efficient ride to the higher level of care. So if you had someone who needed a neurosurgeon urgently, a trauma surgeon, uh, it would be ready for us once we landed at Lehigh Valley Hospital, Cedar Crest. I, I think, uh, Dr. Bonfanti, to make people feel uh, a lot secure about whether they stay or go, it's always the best decision that the doctors come up with. Correct. You're, you're not going to send anyone out if they don't have to go out. It's not a matter of them thinking, oh, if I go up, they're going to send me up there. No, I think the best medical decision is made for the person's welfare. Am I correct? You're absolutely correct. And as I mentioned previously, there's many patients that we can keep now mm -hmm. because we have this program. So if they have a traumatic injury, there's sometimes that we can keep them. When an emergency happens, uh, you know, people panic. I'm the biggest baby in the world. My, my tongue starts swelling. I thought I'm dying, okay? But how do you, and that's why I love the you nurse, I mean, the nurses and, and the healthcare up there. I mean, the aides, they're just fabulous. All, and, and kudos to you. But very quickly is, you know, that person's nervous. They're scared. You know, they're in, they're in the trauma and mentally themselves. The training that you have, you know, is to make them feel as comfortable as possible. Right, Alexis? Yeah, and I think that we have, you know, we also have um, a patient care advocate that's there a lot of the time. Um, we have, you know, all kinds of things that make the patient and the patient's family comfortable and understand that it's not just about, you know, trauma is not just the patient and just and only that certain thing. It, 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 encompasses a lot more things. It encompasses all the diagnostics and all the ancillary staff and also requires the family and the family presence and that's also another part of what we do and how we incorporate that into our trauma program. I think what we get, what we get well is that we do this every day. You know, this is what we do. Um, myself, Dr. Jones, Alex, Dan, Wally, this is what we do. We understand 
just like it's sometimes uncomfortable for us to come on a TV set mm -hmm. uh, where you're very comfortable, mm -hmm. we also understand that somebody coming into an emergency room mm -hmm. is not necessarily going to be Good very enough. comfortable. And we, we get that. So we try to bring whatever we can to that bedside to, to help them calm, get calm. And no place is that more important than our trauma patients. So like Alex said, we have social services involved, we have patient advocate, you know, when we have those times to do that. Uh, so we try to get them involved and take care of the family's needs as well. And then aftercare with rehab and other home care services. Mm -hmm. So that's the great thing about the, having the trauma center in the community now. We can provide services here uh, that we weren't able to provide before. You certainly can feel very comfortable, that's for sure. You know, I, I hope we never, I have never have, or anyone never needs it, but yet when they do, you know, you feel very comfortable in, in, in what you're doing at the trauma center. Anything else, you got a minute left? Anything else that you would like to uh, say that we may have missed? No, I believe we pretty much covered it. Again, I hope the viewers would understand that we do are very thoughtful in the process of who we send out and who we keep. We are able to keep more patients now, and we are able to communicate very well with the, the other center down at Lehigh Valley Cedar Crest. Um, but I'm really proud of the everyone's work over the last several years and uh, the, the processes that went into place to make this happen. And uh, we just continue to prove, improve because every one of those cases is reviewed. One very quick question. Um, I know that you make the best decision whether they should go to Lehigh or, or not, but is there any time where, where you have uh, your questionable where the family has to make the decision? You, do you ever give them an option saying, look, this is what happens here. If we do this here or whatever, do you, th does that ever happen? That happens all the time in emergency medicine, and it should happen in medicine yeah. in general. The, it should always be that of a patient-centered decision. It okay. should always be should shared decision-making. Okay. So we do always involve the family in that. Yeah. Uh, because this way, you know, they feel comfortable. They know what's going on. I want to thank you, doctor. Thank and, you. And uh, once again, not because you're sitting here, but all, all, the, all of you who work up at the hospital, the trauma center emergency room, are to be applauded. You know, everyone does their own job and does it extremely well. I saw it, I witnessed it, and it was, it's just great. I wish you the best, Dr. Bonfante. I'm, I'm sorry. Um, uh, we have on the show today, um, folks, we had, if you missed part of it, please go and you know we sold the show a number of times, it's on our website. Uh, we had Dr. Greg Jones, who is the emergency room director of Lehigh Valley Hospital. We had, um, of course, Dr. Bonfante, who is a trauma program medical director. We have Alexander Malent, uh, Malenka, uh, who is the trauma programmer. We had Wally Boyle from the APS paramedic and of course Danny Ryman uh, who is a critical care transport paramedic. And Danny, I gotta tell you, you know, we talked about this many, many years, okay? You've seen a lot develop in, in the Lehigh Valley, huh? Yeah, we definitely raised the bar. Oh, there's no question uh, about it. I know you're excited because you've been such a strong supporter of what we're doing up here. So folks, remember 24-7 SSPTV.com. We'll see you next time.